publisher. Good, good. Pleasure to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you. Awesome. Stacy nice Miller, here. eh? Yes. So I'm really excited to hear what you have to say about the book. I've been working on it for so long, and I'd just love to get it published and out to the to the people so they can read all my works. What do you think? Well, overall the book was quite good. But there were certain parts of it that I personally felt insulting kind of towards Americans. Oh my. And since this is an American company, I don't know if we can publish your book. Really? Like, I'm, I'm kind of surprised. What kind of, what kind of stuff did you find in it that was so insulting to Americans? Well, to be honest, I have five major points of why American in this book, depicted in this book, are quite like self-centered. You know, how about page four? Let's go to page four here. When Randolph is talking to Winterborn in the candy shop. I can't get any candy here. Any American candy, at least. American candy's the best. And are American little boys the best? I, I don't know. I am an American boy. I see you're one of the best. I know you an American man. I am an American man. <sighs> American men are the best. Oh, and here comes my sister. She's an American girl. Oh. He's depicting that all American men are just about themselves. They're very egocentric. Hmm. Page 36 also supports this. She's very egocentric. Like, listen, Dave says this. I have never allowed a man to dictate me or interfere with anything I do. Well, an another point, even not, not even minding the first self-centered point. This book depicts people, American people, have very low moral standards. What do you mean? Take page 45, for instance. On page 45 alone, it says the word flirt in context to Americans eight times. Really? Flirting. Flirt. Flirt. Flirting? What a flirt. Flirting. Flirt. Flirt. Yes, it's said a lot. I guess I could see how that point would uh, kind of seem offensive to Americans. What else do you have here? Well, say in this book, it's not as direct as the other ones, but it shows American women as quite manipulative. Mm -hmm. Say on page 23, when Winterborn and Daisy are talking about going to the castle, and Daisy keeps changing her mind. I suppose you don't think it's proper. Eugenio doesn't think anything's proper. I am at your service. Does the mademoiselle propose to go alone? Oh no, no, with this gentleman here. As the mademoiselle. Oh, I hoped you would make a fuss. I don't care to go anymore. I myself would make a fuss if you wouldn't go. That's all I want! A little fuss! You think that makes Daisy look manipulative? Of course. Even through that entire passage, she's toying with him. And she's trying to get a reaction out of him. Especially so at the end of the book, when she says, Mr. Winterborn, I want you to know I was never engaged to that handsome Italian. Manipulative. Okay, uh, what else? It's also quite insulting to Americans how it depicts them as rude throughout this entire book, especially Daisy. That's the carry drive back to the castle. Exactly. She calls him nothing but horrid for ten minutes straight. Mm. Horrid! 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 My fifth and final point, it represents Americans with a fake innocence in order to push their hidden agendas. Really? I can, I can understand where you're coming from with horrid, but this one, I don't, I don't really see where you're going. Take 37 for example. It's quoted directly from the book. But Daisy, on this occasion, continued to present herself as an inscrutable combination of audacity and innocence. So unfortunately, based on all these points, I'm gonna have to reject your book from being published. I find it's too insulting towards the American population. Hey, Mr. Publisher. Mr. Conwell. Oh, I see. You? I hope you have some good news for me. I am. I just finished editing this book you gave me. Fantastic. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. You're most welcome. Hello. What? What are you? What? What? Are you Henry James? Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice to meet you. I just read the yeah. book. Oh, excellent. What, what did you think? It's really supported my Christian worldview. Really? In what way? Well, in 
Proverbs 26, 1 to 11, it talks about the fools. Hmm. And also, in Proverbs 18, 2, it says, A fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his opinion. That sounds a lot like Daisy. Personally, I think her character more contradicts the Bible than it does supports it. She shows very little love for other people. Especially, take that, take that carriage ride, or the boat ride, when she's just saying horrid or winterborn over and over again. Horrid! 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 Listen to the Bible itself says, in 1 Corinthians 13, 4-7, Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. That is hardly Daisy. Well, what about Miss Walker when she's trying to protect uh, Daisy from Giovanelli? Well, like as a good shepherd, it says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 2 and 3, Shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight, not under the compulsion, but willingly as God would have you. Not for shameful gain, but eagerly, not domineering over those and those you charge, but being examples to the flock. Exactly. I, I still think there's more against than there is for the Christian worldview. This whole book is driven by lust. What about on page 6 when Winterborn talks about the, her feminine beauty and how he's addicted to it? They were wonderfully pretty eyes, and indeed, I had not seen for a long time anything prettier than my fair countrywoman's various features. Her complexion, her nose, her ears, her teeth. I had a great relish for feminine beauty. I was addicted to observing and analyzing it. And as regards this young lady's face, I made several observations. Take Proverbs 6.25. Do not desire her beauty in your heart, and do not let her capture you with her eyelashes. Clearly, in this book, Winterborn is infatuated with her. Well, what about when Winterborn tries to protect Daisy from Giovanelli when he's at the piano? Well, when you deal with natives, you must go by the customs of the, of the place. Flirting is purely an American custom. It doesn't exist here. So when you show yourself in public with Mr. Giovanelli and without your mother, gracious poor mother, though you may be flirting, Mr. Giovanelli is not. He means something else. In 1 Corinthians 16, 13 to 14, it says, Be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, be strong, let all that you do be done in love. Just like Wonderborn did to Daisy. I guess I understand your point, but what, what about on page 36, when Daisy says this? I beg your pardon if I say it wrong, but the main point is to give you an idea of my meaning. I have never allowed a man to dictate me, or interfere with anything I do. How about Psalm 10 for? In the pride of his face, the wicked does not seek him. All his thoughts are, there is no God. Daisy is clearly being prideful in this passage. She's not willing to listen to other people. She's only relying on herself. Well, regardless of what you have said, this book has affected my ministry. It makes me realize how lost people are and how people can seek the folly of the world. And on the other hand, we realize in the book how pride will keep us away from Jesus. Hmm. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Like, in the book, there's so many times where uh, people just live for themselves and just are totally self-centered and how pride just gets in the way of their everyday life. Yeah, it really, it really does show me how lost people are. And it puts more responsibility on my shoulders to reach out to those people. You know what? In light of all this discussion, I think I will partner with you and I'll publish your book for you, sir. Excellent. Fantastic! <laughs>